Am I live? Bruno, you're live. You don't care. You just want the best. Welcome. Welcome. I believe there's some people here. Hi, how are you? This is going to be a quick live stream today because I have a hard out at one. Um, but as you guys know, I was working on ears and I got a little sidetracked, but I did get some progress on those. And so I was going to show you the ears that I completed, the ones that I'm still kind of have pieces of. But before we get to the ears, I wanted to show you kind of my side track, side quest. Um, this is the material I used. This one. And project bag. I like to keep my stuff in either project bags or boxes in semi-clear so I can see what's in them, but not too clear so it doesn't look like quite a mess. But this was, I wanted a, I wanted a tiara, but I didn't want, a, um, you know, the classic one with the cones and the rhinestones. I wanted the Aurora Princess Jasmine with the red outfit tiara one. And so I got, I raided my mom's um, craft supply stash and she had this, which is a, they call it leather, but canvas. It has a um, warp and weft. So there's the strings going across that has um, glitter on it and this glitter doesn't shed. You know how like glitter is the herpes of craft supplies? This is a good one because it's not shedding, which means it's great color. And I don't have to finish the edges. The edges aren't um, fraying. They're finished. So you can use a, cut, a raw cut edge as a finished edge, which is nice. So I grabbed a whole stack of these from all the colors, all the colors. But I am making crown slash tiaras today. Um, let's see. This one was my first one that I made. And I think they turned out great. They're exactly what I wanted. Super simple, super easy to make, really pretty and comfortable because I get annoyed of having things on my head, like especially headbands. So if it's not comfortable, it's not going to stay on like one of those rigid tiaras. Not, not going to happen. Um, Welcome, Dan Does Junk, and welcome, 45th Clown. Um, Dan says, I appreciate the non-shedding glitter. Yes, it gives you the sparkle without the mess. So this was my first prototype. Um, I'll break down how I made these in a second, but I wanted to show you some variations of the same thing. So this one, I did a couple lines of stitching in, and it looks sharp. Isn't that one fun? Granted, you don't have to put it, if you put it in half your hair, it's not going to do this funny thing that my hair is doing, but I think this is a great basic tiara. And I had mentioned that I wanted Jasmine's tiara. So I added, so I sewed in a rhinestone as opposed to um, gluing it in like I did. This one, I glued one in. Just playing with techniques, but this one I sewed an oval and then cut out the jewel. And then Princess Tiara. And it's not whole flat on my head, so it's sticking up just that ever so much. But it's comfortable. It naturally folds where it wants to fold to stand up, which is 
kind of why I am having so much fun with these stupid tiaras because they're really easy. Um, another variation I did of one. I think I left that one out of the bag because I was playing with it. <laughs> oh, well, I have one where I did it silver with, oh, there it is. Right here by the unfinished Mickey ears. I, whoops. Shh, have to be careful how I store this. Got to smoosh it and you got to smoosh. I added um, rhinestone trim to the top edge of this one. So, and I stuck the jewel on using a rhinestone. So, I think these are really fun tiaras. So, you want to see how to make them? It takes me about five minutes. I have my glitter fabric. So you can buy these individually in sheets at most craft, supp craft supply stores. Um, and you got to make sure that you're getting the fabric and not the paper. I'm sure you can stitch through paper. It's going to tear. It's not going to be as durable. This will be a lot more durable and probably washable too. Um, you can also use the felt. So if it has a felt back, a fabric back, um, they're with the vinyls and the sheets of things. You can also use vinyl. You can use leather. Um, you can even use foam. Even a glitter foam, I think, would work for this. Um, but I'm going to take this one right here to start with. And I'm going to get three out of one piece of one square. I don't know how big this square is, to tell you the truth. I have been eyeballing this the whole time. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches. So it's ten divided by three, of course. Or you can fold it into thirds. <laughs> so how we fold it and straight. H70 Polo, I see your hair is crimped. Yep, it makes it floofier because my hair is flat and I wanted Disney princess hair with um, tiaras because it's fun to have floofy hair. Scissors. So There is no um, right way to do this. I marked it with a fold. There is no exact measurements needed. It's kind of based off of your scale and who you are, but I got three rectangles out of a 10 inch square and they ended up being 3.5 three inches and three quarters of an inch. No, three eighths. One, two, yeah, three eighths. Three inches and three eighths of an inch. So I have three of them. I'm gonna start with one and I'm gonna fold it in half. I will draw a line so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I do not draw a line. I just kind of go for it because it's I have in my head the shape I want already, but I will mark this square up with my straight edge and there's my center. And then after I find the center, I'm going to fold over the edge into the center to find my quarters. I only really need to mark it on one side because I'm going to cut it on the fold, but I fold it just to mark it. But I'm going to draw a line so you guys can see what I'm doing. It is very important to keep the bottom edge square in my design just because it keeps everything folding the right way. So I have 
it divided in half and then in quarters. Um, number 17 French curve, my favorite French curve. I wasn't using this, but why the heck not? There we go. That looks pretty. Um, I start at the point of my first line, the center line is the tip of my tiara, and then I curve down to where this point is, the quarter point, and that's where I do my second prong of my tiara. So this is the first triangle, this is going to be my second triangle, and then I need to finish over here at, um, I usually do it for about five-eighths of an inch. A full inch is a bit much, but I think I'm just going to do a full inch because it's not going to hurt, and I'm going to see what it is if I do a full inch. So I mark an inch, and I square it out an inch, but I've been doing it at three-eighths of an inch. Three-eighths? No. Five-eighths. <sighs> numbers, numbers, numbers. I haven't been doing it with numbers. I've just been drawing it out. But this are the proportions that I consistently have been doing. And then I'm just going to curve this point. Find a pretty curve that I like on this French curve. And meet those two points. So I have my tiara shape drawn out. I like to start at the point and push my way down. I'm left-handed, so I usually do it this way. Not left-handed, but right-handed, left-brained. <laughs> so I always mess myself up. But I'd start at the point, try and keep the two pieces together. Keep it square at the bottom. That's where you really want to keep it. The top, it doesn't matter as much. You guys aren't looking at what I'm cutting. But make sure that it's not doing this. If it's going to do that ever so slightly, make sure it's on this side. And this is the straight line. That makes sense. H seven O Polo, did someone teach you how to make a tiara, or did you? Are you following your in, own intuition? Well, I worked at a costume shop. I've made lots and lots of tiaras. I've prepared tiaras. I have made flapper headbands, all sorts of different headpieces in general. And goofing off, I made this one, and I just really liked the way it turned out. And um, it ticked a lot of the boxes of costuming pieces that are a little bit random on my list. First of all, nobody thinks about this, but you can do gymnastics in it. There's no actual medals. So if you're on stage and doing a dance performance, you're not going to damage yourself or your accessory. Um, nobody thinks about that, but as a costumer, I randomly do. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And then it also ticks the box of being a nice, bright, shiny, shiny block of color. Um, I like the way it holds its shape. So it's just kind of a TR pattern that I was making. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go live with this one. So this is me making up a tiara costume piece that I had fun with and I want to see what you guys can make with it um but this is how I get the general shape of what we're working with if you don't draw on the back you won't have these ugly lines so you won't have to think about them but for you I drew you guys the lines of proportion of where the proportions are now I'm going to draw this out so you guys can see what I'm doing This is how it gets to lay the way it needs to. Hold on, let me line that up, line that up. Okay. So this line's that important, but if you look at this side, see how I have a line that's not quite to the top of this? I'm going to fold this up. And actually, instead of using my 
sewing machine. I will use my sewing machine, but you didn't see that. I'll use my hot glue gun. And then this one's a no-sew one, so you don't have to use the excuse I don't have a sewing machine. Let me see what people are saying while I um, wait for that to get hot. 45th Clown, do you have Christmas crackers in America? Those would be great inside a high quality DIY version. Yes, yes they would. They are great kids party crafts and accessories. Like I said, no sharp points and little kids can decorate them and have fun and they're really fun, good quality. So I'm really glad I stole this from my mom because I probably wouldn't have bought it on my own. The sheets are really cheap, like they're only like they're a dollar a sheet or something like that to get them on clearance. But um, yeah. Dan does junk. I'm trying to coax my brother into making something like a cosplay. He has an art degree and is type that tends to master whatever he gets into. I get it. The perfectionist, but done is better than perfect. And just getting started and having a piece that you're proud of and then kind of working from there helps keep the motivation going in my experience. Oh, it looks like it's hot. All right, I have quarter inch elastic because that is what I have on hand without having to go dig anything out. There's no actual, I wouldn't go like more than an inch thickness of elastic. I think over more than that is just too much. Um, but this is just quarter inch braided elastic, so it's not going to curl or anything. Um, my scientific method of finding out how big of a piece of elastic is is I pinch it and I hold it on my head <laughs> and then I pull it as tight as I want it to be once it's on and I kind of do it on the looser side of things and that is my scientific method of doing it because I know that I get annoyed of things being too tight um, and if it's too loose I can always tie a knot and make it a little bit tighter or pinch it or use a safety pin there's things that I can do to make it tighter but I do not like it headband squeezing my head it makes my brain hurt um so but with generally with elastic a good rule of thumb is the circumference of your head minus six inches of negative ease is going to give you a good um stretch amount but that also works on the waistband and it's kind of just a general rule general rule of thumb to help you kind of figure out what your um, elastic should be. And this part doesn't stretch, so you subtract however much this is from that number. And then you subtract the six inches of negative ease. So subtract the number, the length of your TR that doesn't stretch from the circumference of your head. Take that number, subtract six inches from it, and then that's how long your elastic should be. But yeah, so what are these lines that I drew on here, how it's slightly below. If I fold my tiara up and pinch it right to that line, so it meets up to that line, see how it's slightly sticking up? That's going to give me a prettier edge than if I do it all the way folded up. It's going to feel way more twisted. But just lowering it so it's right below that gives you a smooth transition from pinch to tiara point. It'll make more sense when you're actually like, oh, okay. Remember to keep it really square because that is a this is a square angle. It should be this should be your straight line of your edge. So this should be square and this should be square. And if they're both square and you pinch it up right on the edge, keeping it just below that line on both sides, and it's even. You don't want to do it one pulled more than the other. If you keep it even, then it's going to see how it's kind of wanting to fold a little bit in the middle. When you put it on your head, it's going to naturally go to the, um, it's going to naturally roll and it's going to do a nice curved roll. Um, it's like when you make collars and you want it to roll a rolled collar. It's the same thing is what we're kind of creating. And that's why we only pinch it on the ends and it slightly stands up using the support of that rolled piece. So, oh my gosh, I have been using 
um, needle and thread over hot glue as much as possible because once you hot glue, you're kind of stuck hot gluing for the rest of the project because needles and threads and hot glue don't typically mix. And to discourage the hot glue use, I put in the black hot glue. So I have to be very, very less is more. But oh, and I need a new glue stick. Got more. Okay. Oh, hot glue. That's more is more. Whoops. Okay. It's hot. This thing is my favorite thing for working with hot glue because it has a metal tip and I can use it instead of my fingers and the hot glue just pops right off of it without getting all stuck and I can really smoosh it and hold it where it needs to be without burning myself, you know, having um, fingertips. It's a little hot glue. A little smoosh and smoosh. Turn it off. And now. probably a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. But there is a no so high quality, very pretty tiara, in my opinion. So one version, put this hot glue away. Now, this is my five minute version, I fold it, make my crease. And so it sits nicely because if you don't fold it, that loop gets a little bulky to cut. And I like a sharp point. Fold my second mark. What is, oh. Anyways. This is my patterning right here. Actually, I like these scissors better. I uh, keep it square, curve to that point, curve and come straight, square it off at the end. That's the extent of my patterning. So, I may or may not have the bobbin thread to do this at the moment. but I will sew till I run out. Now to make a popping tiara, I fold it now right side out so that I have my glitter edge and I fold it directly in half, making a 90 degree uh, square corner right here. And I am going to start at the bottom, backstitch, and go to the top and backstitch. I know backstitching is a little bulky and I'm doing it just on the edge, as edgy as I can. Um, but the backstitch will keep you from having um, messed up. We'll keep it from unraveling and it really does unravel if you don't. Actually, I'm using a creamier white because it will be a little less blatantly white. Yes, Dan does jump. That was the magic lamp. That was me wishing. I wish I had 
Jasmine's tiara, and then it was like, poof, you can make one yourself. I can grant my own wishes, I guess, and I like it, because the genie's been great. But this one totally gives me Princess Jasmine vibes. But. Hello, Ralph Mork, welcome. I am just threading my sewing machine right now. I have an old needle because I have been sewing through all sorts of crazy materials. Why do I feel like I'm stuck on something? Oh, the foot's not up, that's why the tension's high. Okay. I may run out of bobbin thread, I hope I don't because I don't know if I have a bobbin on me, but we'll see. We'll get there when we need to. All right. Tiny stitches. Um, don't do a long stitch on the on this. It's a top stitch. We're going to see it. If you can use a matching thread, go for it. I do not recommend metallic threads. They are too delicate for this kind of a situation. They're pretty. And you might want to if you get a good heavy duty or a polyester wrapped metallic, but I'm just going plain cotton. I think it looks really pretty. Well, plain polyester, it's not cotton, let's be real. Um, but, Nor, hello there, hello Nor, nice to meet you. All right, so, TR fold in half, and I'm just going to stitch along this edge as close to the edge as I can. I'm going to do three stitches, back stitch three stitches, and then keep going. I have a... Two, three, back stitch. One, two, three, and then trim my threads. Be care about them. But now we have a sharp point. I'm going, now these points, I've done a few experiments and I'm not a fan of the radiating points. It gives it a look, it's not the worst. I don't hate it. It goes from being frozen to kind of um, nautical, but I found that I prefer these points also at a um, square, squared up from the bottom because they curve up nicely. So. Oh, everybody check out Dan Does Junk. Dan may go live today if he remembers. So I right, remember how this is about that much from here. I fold it so it's square at the bottom and it goes directly up to this point. And then I do the same. Thing, but I have to do it on the outside. So folding it so the center's in and I'm just going to stitch along this edge. And one, two, three, back stitch. One, two, three. And let me do the other side. Again, I'm not measuring, I'm just folding and making sure right sides are out because it's a top stitch. Two, three, back stitch. Trim your threads, people. I know I don't like to, but it makes it look so much nicer and way more professional. But the threads make it look homemade. Okay. So we added those two lines. And now all we have to do is fold it ever so slightly up, just a pinch underneath 
This top one, I am really good at eyeballing where it's going to be, but just a pinch underneath so it's not all the way at the top. And I'm going to start with one side of my elastic. scientific method of checking the width that's going to work all right now this is where you don't want to get a mobius loop so don't i know there's a twirl right here but don't let this twirl spin you around keep it squared and keep this squared fold it and then meet your loop up this is where you can get twisted and it's annoying so just kind of don't overthink it but pay attention So let me oh, here it is. Trim my threads because that's the ugliest part of this. That didn't take me very long at all. I love these tiaras. Just look how fun they are. They look sharp. They're exactly what I wanted as a little kid when I watched Disney princess movies. I wanted it to be solid gold. I didn't want those diamondy things with the lines and the rhinestones. It just looked not like the princess movies. And it's simple. It's sharp looking. And it's comfortable. The number one thing is that it's comfortable because I will not wear anything that's going to be irritating. It may last an hour and then it's off, but. But yeah, now I have a whole bunch of these. I'm going to have lots of fun. Totally great. Like I think the 45th clown said Christmas poppers, birthday parties. Um, I feel like I can make a flapper headband out of that. I can do Wonder Woman, I think, because I've done her headband, but I think doing it with a little bit more of a pop in it might make it stand up a little. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe not. I'll have to play with that one. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way my Wonder Woman headband turned out, but I do like the way that this ended up. Um, Danda's junk. Ooh, I can see a seashell tiara with similar seams as the blue one. Yes, the blue one totally gives off seashell be she seashell vibes. But first I was thinking, well, this could be like totally an Elsa crown, which it still can, but it just screams under the sea. Oh, excuse me. Well, thank you, Danda's junk. He says, I'm really loving these simple, quick crafting ideas. Yeah, I was making them and I figured why not share this one with you? That was a really easy one, five minute tiara that looks like I want it to. So, yay. Uh, if it was more yellowish and you added some red gems, it would resemble the Ice King's crown from Adventure Time. Yes, I have various shades of gold. I have this orangey gold. I have this softer gold, this yellow. Like they all have, I opened up the multicolor pack and I grabbed all the gold ones and then I did a thing of the silvers and I started to do colors and then I was thinking, well, maybe I need to do a Barbie one out of this like fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I probably should do a Barbie one out of this. Um, 
but yes, I very much am enjoying having fun making these. <sighs> what other costumes do you think? Well, tiaras are just such a versatile, versatile costume piece in general. Rented them all the time. Will Connors, welcome. Hello. Um, yeah. But let me just I'm gonna make a Barbie one. See how long this one takes me. Just do it. This is my squared edge. I didn't cut it square. Fold it in half. Fold it in quarters. And then I'm going to do this one hot glue one because I'm, yeah, I'll do this one as a hot glue one because I can't. Um, elastic. Here's my elastic. Make sure I'm not a Mobius strip going straight down and curving it the way it needs to go. Don't fall. Don't twist. Don't dry. And swoosh. Okay, got it. And shh, don't tell. Good thing I have a hot glue gun right here. Biggest thing I'm worried about is the Mobius strip because I've done that mistake lots and lots of times. Yep. Danda's junk says, LOL, oh, that one's pretty much done already. Yep, told you. Really quick. Really fun. Sure. I feel like there's so many costumes that this could go with. And I could hike in it, and it passes the gymnastics test. I know nobody else has that test, but every outfit that I wear has, I, I rate it on a scale. Can I do a cartwheel in it or not? If it doesn't pass that, um, if I can't do a cartwheel in it, I reconsider my outfit choice. Sometimes it's still, you know, the situation doesn't call for it, but still, it's a factor that goes into my outfit choices. Um, yeah, so I just made one, two, three crowns in 30 minutes, which is 10 minutes a crown if with me chit-chatting and talking and not getting to work. Um, this needs a little pinch more glue because using not hot hot glue. Maybe it doesn't stick as well as you want it to. But no sew. Or you can sew and make it look really nice and sharp. But yay, I have more crowns in the project bin. This is my unfinished ear bin. Things that haven't made it into a finished set yet. But there's some really great pieces that I'm working on. Like this ridiculous bow. Isn't this the funnest cars bow? It has the old timey cars going off road in the back country. And um, I wanted to do Lightning McQueen like off on an ear or something. 
and I made tires to go with this one, but I don't know. I haven't finished it and I was kind of, it was getting a bit ridiculously big, but it is still fun. Also could probably be the back of the head. I don't know, but this is my currently working on Mickey ears from last live stream. And these are the ones that I more or less have finished. Um, this is where Toby and Bruno were sitting and they're no longer there. Um, so this one, I have to um, reevaluate how I did the attaching of it, but these are the um, X-Wing and Death Star on a silicone hat. I need to make them less floppy, but I genuinely like the way this one turned out. I think it's fun. <laughs> Thank you, Dandus Junk. That bow is awesome. <laughs> Bring it to any car race event. Right. Can you guess this Disney princess? Oh, she lost a couple of her little thingamajigs. I need to glue those down better, but they're supposed to be little lanterns. Yes, Dan does junk. I put them on a hat instead of a headband because headbands dig into the sides of your head right here and here. And even the lightest little touch all day long can be migraine inducing. Just so. This one's a very light. I need to attach my lanterns a little bit better, but they, I like how highly reflective they are. But you guys guess this Disney princess? I really just, let me just fix this. I had two more of those sitting right here. Yes. Tangled. The two pinks are two slightly different color pinks. The camera adjusts trying to make them the same pink, but they are not the same pink. One is the darker purpley pink and one's the lighter purpley pink. But this one's really comfortable and I think it's fun. Um, this is how my Nightmare Before Christmas one ended up looking like. like this little ribbon but this one's a comfortable one less is more um this is isabella there's a cactus in the middle right there from encanto um Minnie Mouse. I think these ones are like one of my favorites and I really like the velvet bow, how it pops. Um, this is also Minnie Mouse. It is on a hair barrette. So it's not on a uh, um, headband for the pinching reasons. And so my goal with this one is to not need, well, but it clips into your hair. I think it would be better with your hair up and then clipped in, but these are on a hair clip. this junk. Just thought it was something for another Star Wars theme one. Use the bow for the wings for the X-Wing fighter. Right? That would be fun. Um, speaking of wings, this one is based off of Tinkerbell wings. So I did a clear with the um, on plastic and then I stitched beads around so that you could tell that they are wings. 
with a green bow and some sparkle magic fabric and this pin that I got like lots and lots of years ago. And that's also a barrette to make kind of very wee Tinkerbell bow. Um, this is what I kind of came up with for the um, Beauty and the Beast bow. The bow goes down more once the barrette's in place because it's wired ribbon and you can see through it and it has the roses. I wanted to do the star, like the tip of the crazy fairy that turned him into the beast, the tip of her magic wand, because this one gives me that fairy vibes. Um, she's a nameless fairy in the Disney universe that we often don't think of. But, um, but yes, so I made that one and I made this one. This one's the back looks like this. This one's back looks like this. And they're both barrettes so that they can go in the hair. And I think these ones are really fun. So those are what I've kind of come up with so far. I am still making ears more or less as I feel inspired. Like, but if I'm not feeling it, I'm not like making it anyways, because if I don't like it, it's not gonna get worn. Um, but yeah, not top. How many headbands do you think you've made in your life? That is a very, very good question. Well, hundreds. I did. I was a gymnastics coach who often made weird things for my kids. I made more scrunchies than I did hairbands, but head. Bands and hair ties were fun little matching thing that I could make all the girls for like a Christmas present. Um, also, I was a camp counselor for a few years and I made headbands for the each for a cabin full of girls. Um, I've made them for plays, productions, costume shop. We've done we redid all of the flapper headbands. So I would have to say a couple hundred headbands in my lifetime. I know that I've made a couple hundred wedding dresses in my lifetime because it takes me about eight hours to make a dress, a couple hundred, and I filled out multiple notebooks, one dress per thing, so a lot, a lot. Wolverine Scratch, more headbands than the U.S. soccer team. Well, I could probably make them each their own headband. Doesn't mean I necessarily want to. It's a lot of work, okay? I understand how much work goes into these things. Don't just throw things away willy nilly. Anyways, but that really was a really quick live stream. I was able to get through the project, make multiple of them, and um, still have about 15 minutes. I kind of want to make a stitched one with the pink because I want it to have that sharp edge. So that looks really fun. All right, let's see how fast I can do this without. Not inside out this time. I'm just going to do it with the right side out because see if that saves some time so I'm not flipping. And square it on the edge. No, I don't want to flip it that way. I'm just so used to the hand. Mus muscle memory and repetitive motion of flipping it. And that's what I was trying not to do. most important point and then line it up. And you may not want to backstitch, but you'll regret it if you don't because it will start to come undone with the on and off wear and tear. Elastic. 
I hid everything from me. Here's my elastic. Should be in here. Right here. Ah. Wolverine stretch. OMG already? Yep, I have 10 minutes left and then I gotta go. But I can make this way faster than that. This in place. Twist. Green scratch, where do you says where you're where are you going on the first of March? Well, I have an appointment at one, so I have to get going. Nothing exciting. Just being a grown-up and doing things that I have to do. But thank you guys for joining me today. I am glad that I got to show somebody else like this cool thing that I came up with. I was like, oh my gosh, this is too much fun. I have to share it. So Ugh, all the threads. Trim your threads. I know that's the most annoying part. And if you glue it, you don't have to thread. You don't have to trim your threads. But I like these really sharp points that I get from the um, from sewing tucks into the fabric. Tuck is the these are the technical term for this. Is a no, it's not a tuck. If it's all the way down, is it a tuck? Anyways. Put all the threads. So. I think I folded this one over a little bit more than I normally do, but I still don't hate it. Welcome, Thomas Hulse. I'm glad that you made it. We have about five minutes and then I'm going to call it a day, but thank you for being here. Got a tiara. So, Wolverine, what's those 80s summer hats with a visor? I seen it in a movie last night. Sun visors? I don't know. I love sun visors, using them for bases for bonnets, especially like doing those, the, the um, Victorian bonnets for like when Christmas carolers and stuff where you really need a stuff, a stiffer base. I love those headbands. Those things are great. They also make really good, um, if you put the, those sun visors up on the, so up on the wrong way, like you're wearing it as a headband, that also could be a really great base for doing like bigger headpieces that you need to support more weight on. Um, but yeah, hair's definitely crazy today. I have been trying on all these tiaras and pounds. I think they turned out really great. Like I said, I think, where is it? My favorite one is the one I always lose because it's my favorite one. Here it is. No, nope, that's not it. Oh. Oh, this one I didn't do very tight. Let me tighten the knot. So this one's too loose. It's really easy to tighten it back up. I just, oh, it's really easy unless you're live and you're telling people it's easy and then all of a sudden it gets really difficult to tighten a little knot in the end. There 
data. Do the princess bangs. So they do the swoopy thing. Get that hair out of the way. I know, princess bangs. Maybe if I started it from here. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this random tutorial on how to make quick tiaras that are comfortable and you can hike around in all day. Um, yeah, if you can add a, please like the stream because that really does help me out. Um, any more questions before I go? Cause I accomplished everything that I was trying to do today. So, hey. Dan does junk. I let it, I like it better with the crease. Yes, it definitely does pop with the crease, but I don't hate it just solid because just solid is simple. Less is more. Adding jewels is fun to decorate. Imagine giving these to a big group of people and giving them rhinestones and glue and saying, have fun. Hmm. Um, 45th Clown, thank you. Enjoyed the stream again. Appreciate your time. Well, thank you for being here, 45th Clown. Wolverine Scratch. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Not top. What's the next big project? I have a couple. Not. Don't really want to talk about all of them on the internet because then they will be held accountable. But things are coming up. Um, but I did just get off of a really fun project where I had to take a pair of scissors and dole them and then hand them to a bunch of a bunch a set of twin kids and say, hair, cut your hair, but don't actually cut your hair. And they worked out perfectly. So I was really stressed about that happening. And I wanted to do a live on it to show you guys the, the scissors and that they were really cool. But then my niece borrowed them and brought them to school and got in trouble because <laughs> she got my sharp pair and my dull pair and was playing pranks on her friends. But you know what? Totally worth it. So I am not even mad. It was fun. Um, that was a project I just finished up that I was going to share with you and didn't but now I've told you about it, so at least there's that. Um, Thomas Hewell's farewell, fellow maker, farewell. Dan does junk, he was there when I was making them. Yeah, you made those scissors sharper at first. Yes, no, they kept getting sharper and sharper. And um, I just, I eventually just took a rasp to them and really doled them out. And I handed them to my niece and had her cut and see if she could get the paper to cut. And then I just kept going at it and going at it and going at it until the point where I was like, I can do this without fear of cutting my hair. And then it was like, okay, perfect. Because they were going to little kids. They were supervised little kids, but it was the scene was the little kids had to cut their own hair or their siblings hair. But also in real life, you have to explain to the little kids, it's just acting and not to use real scissors and that they're special. But anyways, that was always fun. Um, yeah, um, I won't be live next week at all. I'm going to be out of town traveling somewhere. But feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting pictures of my adventures as they go. Um, thank you for being here. And until next time, bye. And.